Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for me to head back to Mongolia. I've got the Z8, you've seen a couple of videos, you've seen what it's like. It's been a really good camera. I've been testing it out a lot. I've been playing around with a lot of the focusing features and some videos are coming in the future for you guys to see what I've been doing with the camera, so stay tuned for that. But I also want to talk about this. The 24 to 120. So, um, if you watch my last video on the vlogging, you will see that when I tested it, I did say that I didn't see much difference with the 24 to 105's OSS feature when it comes to the Nikon system. I did notice that when I turned it on, it turned off the electronic stabilization on the camera. But for video, you know, walking around with it, it really made it kind of jumpy and kind of weird looking. And um, when I tried John's lens before I picked this one up, I walked around with it, it's like, hmm, this seems very, very smooth. And I said, when I say smooth, you can walk slowly and get some really good footage out of it. If you saw the first video that I put when I got the Z8 when I was testing on the store, someone had commented, if you guys think it was Greg Corker who saw what I was seeing, was that the, the lens seems to track faster, the native Nikon lens on the body it seemed to track faster and recapture things when I was going around corners. So if you watch the um, other videos, I had one with hand holding it, it seemed very smooth, the vlogging one, um, that was with the 24 to 105. You know, it did a pretty good job. Um, and also the 20, sorry, the 16 to 35, that one was pretty good. It was a lighter setup. It worked very well with the camera. So overall, you know, I decided not to go with another lens from Nikon. I wanted to get the 26 millimeter, but I kind of was worried that that lens would be too tight. You know, if you want to hold your hands there with a uh, vlogging stick or whatever it would be too tight and you know from using sony cameras and i know that when you turn on the active stabilization there's a crop on it and i figured when we put things in the software it's probably the same thing in the nikon side in order to stabilize the footage if when you have the electronic stuff there that turned on is gonna make the wobbles on the side and it would have to crop the image in so 26 millimeter seems a bit too much so this is not the vlogging lens, I wouldn't be using this for vlogging because it's just going to be too heavy. So I'm sticking with the 16 to 35 for now. If something else comes up, I'll take a look at it. I know they have the, what is it, um, 17 to 28. Yeah, I, I haven't decided on that one just yet. I want to see how things go. I still have the Sony camera. I still want to use it, but it's all about the Z8. And I want to see all the things that the Z8 can do and show you guys from content crypt, uh, content creator perspective, photography, video kind of stuff, all of it, so you guys can see that. Um, what else? I was able to get a second battery. They didn't have one in Malaysia, but I, since I came in Hong Kong yesterday, I was able to pick one of those up, so that will help out. And um, still kind of bummed that I don't have a flip out screen. You know, that's the one big thing I miss from the A7R5, is the fact that it had that multi-angle screen. But, I am recording on the Z8 right now. I kind of set things up where I think it should be fine, set that box up almost at the top of the screen for where it's sitting. So when this video is over, we'll both find out together. If you see it, it's good to go. If not, then you hear me talk about it in another video that I had problems, then you know it wasn't good to go. But so far, you know, handheld vlogging it's been fine. Now I'm sitting here having it on the desk pointing at me. So hopefully this will come out good as well so my quick synopsis it's a great camera the feeling is good um, I don't want to go to a full review about it yet it's only been a week I don't want to go to too much you know there are some things that kind of um, bug me I think I talk about that when I first got the camera and I started using it you know I had a little pain in my finger here and it's kind of weird because when I complained about the Sony's grip and how that was and I was like Maybe my finger got used to kind of sit in that little indent on the Sony camera and it's not fitting there. And at that point I was like, man, did I make the right decision in doing this? But I was only for that one day. And I realized I'm lugging around a two pound camera and a three pound lens and just kind of hand holding it, you know, like I would do with the other one, just have it there. And I was like, yeah, you probably won't hold things properly because I've never had any issues. Well, I haven't had any issues with my finger, you know, feeling uncomfortable since that day. And I've been walking around, 
just hold on by itself. I keep taking off the strap. I think I have to get another hand strap for this one, like on the uh, FX30, so I can just strap it on my hand and walk it around. I don't know, somehow I've gotten used to that without, you know, carrying around an extra strap and it, it works for me. And with this 1635 lens, perfect weight, just perfect setup. Bring it up, shoot, yeah. So that's the only thing that I can say that's a negative and I'll go into more and it's not a negative, it's something that kind of happened initially which kind of gave me some concerns. Um, I'll talk more about this if not, if I want to give a proper review between both cameras because I see some similarities, I see some things that are different and you know both cameras image quality I think are in the same, you can tweak to kind of get the same thing. I think the biggest difference is out of the box the Nikon just fantastic. It just looks good green out of the box. I saw a video somebody says, oh, you know, the make how many million pixels and so on and disappointed by the EVF. A couple of people said they disappointed with the EVF. I'm like, guys, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, when I I use a Sony, it, it's almost like watching the TV when you're looking at that stuff. It's like, oh, it looks crisp. I'm like, yeah, but when I look through the Z8, it's like, that's what I see in here, real world. Don't look much different. Doesn't look like I'm looking at a TV screen. Looks like I'm looking through an optical viewfinder. And those of you with a Z8, chime in and let me know how you feel about it. If you just come from a DSLR and you come over to the Z8 and it's your first time utilizing a mirrorless camera for mini brand, let me know what do you think. If you have another brand and you now have the Z8, I'm also curious to see what you think about it. Because for me personally, I remember when I first got the Z6, you know, it was like what I see is what I got. It was just right out there. And that's the one thing I liked about how Nikon implements their um, display. Using the camera outside, I've turned up the brightness on the screen. It's been fine. So without going to too much more, that's my little synopsis. So far it's been pretty good. I've had some autofocus challenges. Um, I didn't mention that in some of the things when I was shooting birds and so on, but you know, on the vlogging thing. Um, it was me having to figure out which thing to use, because again, so far everything has been raw, out of the box, just using things and tweaking along the way. I have not been with Nikon for a little bit, this camera is slightly different. I've been reading a book, the reference guide to figure things out. I've been testing things out just on my own. I made some change, I don't remember what it was. I had to reset the camera and then test again and set up some different things to see which is working and get a better, get a better handle on how to set it up for my use case. And I can share some of that in the next video. Well, I, well when I do that video about my findings about the camera, which settings work better for which scenario, I'll share that with you guys. Anyhow. I'd love to hear from all you other Z owners that are out there, Z8 I should say, that are utilizing this camera now. What's your experience been? What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? What do you think they could change? I'm going to share my findings in a future video. So I'm going to start heading out to the airport now. It's time to go to Mongolia, catch a flight. This video probably will be coming out for another couple of days once I get a chance to edit it. So see you guys in the next few days once I get some more videos up. Take care.